Hey everybody, Anthony here with a double bill review of Mascagni's Cavalleria Rusticana and Leon Cavallo's I Pagliacci, which were shown at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. The conductor was Cornelius Meister. The production was by David Poutney. The set design and costumes were by Robert Innes Hopkins. The choreography was by Zilke Zense. The chorus master was William Spaulding. And the children's chorus master was Christian Lindhorst. Now, the one common thing that is so dominant in both Cavalleria and Pagliacci, it's not just the fact that they're both very small operas. More than that, but they talk about faithless love. In Cavalleria, you have Turidu, who falls in love with Lola, but is also engaged to Santuzza, and Lola apparently is married to Alfio. So there is a lot of drama going on when it comes to love. And in Pagliacci's case, you have Gagno and Neda, who basically have such a loveless marriage. Neda falls in love with Silvio. Tonio sees this because he's rejected by Neda and tells Cagno about the news. In both opera's cases, they don't end very well. In fact, they end very tragically. But that's what makes them both fantastic. And they've been performed side by side in many opera houses, whether it's in Europe, America, Asia, wherever you are, whatever opera house that you're in. There's no denial that they're basically performed side by side, all because of one common theme, faithless love. That's the most dominant theme in this opera. And frankly, I have both a CD and a DVD of both operas. Now, the CD that I have is basically with Montserrat Caballé as Santuzza, Jose Carreras as Turidu and Caño, and Renata Scotto as Neda. Now, in the DVD, I have with Elena Obrazova as Santuzza, Placido Domingo as both Turido and Caño, Renato Burson as Alfio, Fedora Barbieri as Mama Lucia, and Teresa Stradas as Neda. And for those of you who want a real experience of Caveria Rusticana and Pagliacci on DVD, I highly recommend the production on, with Obrazova and Domingo, which is actually a filmed version of both operas because it's basically set on location and you really get the feel of what it's like in a Sicilian village. Oh, and that's another similarity that both operas have. They're both set in a Sicilian village or in a village-like type of setting. And... Like I said, not only do they talk about faithless love, but it's mostly on the bourgeoisie or lower class people. And that's what Verismo is all about. It's not just a matter of seeing characters sing such lovely high note arias, but we hear a lot of screaming, we hear a lot of crying, a lot of shouting and a lot of blood and guts all over each opera when it comes to Verismo. It's basically real life. And yeah, that's pretty much it. With Cavalleria Rusticana and Pagliacci, it's almost no wonder why both of these operas are performed simultaneously. When it comes to faithless love and a bourgeoisie setting, you can't go wrong with either operas. Now, going into the production, with Cavalleria Rusticana, it's not really set in a Sicilian village according to this production of Cavalleria, but it's set in like a slum like environment. I mean, the only scenery that we get are like a backdrop 
of some mountains and at least the sky color changes from like the darker hues of dawn to a more brighter sunnier day and to reaching a late afternoon and what this opera does pretty excitingly is the ending in which we see Turidu's corpse being dropped down from a, from like a high platform and Mama Lucia runs to the corpse and that I thought was just whoa totally mind blowing and sure the production as a whole is an acquired taste if you're open minded then by all means, just go ahead and see this production. But if you're someone who is more of a fan of the traditional productions, then you might as well search somewhere else. And the costumes, I'll say, are very colorful, especially that of Santuzza's, Lola's, Mama Lucia's, well, the main character's costumes. Santuzza basically wears this pink dress and red shoes, and Lola wears like a floral dress. She has a brighter colored dress with it being so um, light blue green. And Mama Lucia, well, she would, she's basically dressed as any Mama Lucia would, like someone who owns a tavern. With Turido, he's dressed in all black. And Alfio is basically dressed as a delivery man and in this production he doesn't ride a mule or he's not in a carriage but he's in a car and i thought that was pretty cute still the production as a whole is an acquired taste but if you're a if you're a person with a very open mind then by all means go ahead and see it if you're someone who is more of a fan of traditional productions, then you might as well search somewhere else. Better yet, go ahead and pop in the DVD of Zeffirelli's Cavalleria Rusticana and Pagliacci and you'll see what I mean. So yeah, the production is pretty okay. It may not suit everybody, but it can suit some people who have a very open mind. Now the singers are what really made this production of Cavalleria Rusticana very worthwhile. In the role of Santuzza, we have the magnificent Valtrau Meyer, who I absolutely admire from my teens because, well, just like her predecessors, Christa Ludwig, Shirley Verrett, Grace Bumbry, Gertrude Runge, Melita Ammerling, uh, Mata Myrtle, Gail Gilmore, and a lot of Falcon singers of the past. She's basically very well known for singing a lot of roles in the dramatic soprano repertoire and the dramatic mezzo repertoire. She's very flexible when it comes to either fecha, so to say. And she's very well known for her metallic voice, which has a lot of very sexy and very sonorous low notes and piercing tops that are so ringing and so beautiful that your ears start to have some sort of an orgasm once you start listening to her velvety voice. And she's basically well known as a Wagner singer, but not only in terms of Wagner because She's basically very well known in the roles of Ortrud, Kundry, Venus, Isolde, Zeglinde, Valtrauta, Frecka, all of those great Wagner Wagnerian roles. But she's also very well praised for her interpretations in French operas like Carmen and Dalila and that of Italian operas like Eboli, Amneris, and of course, tonight, Santuzza which she has been singing for over like, I don't know, 20 years, probably during the time when she transitioned to a soprano or maybe in the late 80s before she started singing her first Isolde 
at Bayreuth in 1993. I don't know when she sang her first Santuzza, but before she sang Santuzza, she began as Lola. And yeah, I have to say, she was absolutely fantastic. And trivia, interesting trivia. I also have her documentary DVD, I Follow a Voice Within Me, which I highly recommend to every Valtaro Meyer fan. I have her Isolde on DVD with Siegfried Jerusalem, Ute Priev, and Falk Struckmann and Matthias Hölle. I have her Venus on DVD and her Fidelio Leonore. All of these were absolutely fantastic as they show her artistry, especially her documentary, I Follow a Voice Within Me. Now this shows Waltraub Meyer in the various stages in her career, and I could really recommend it to everyone who's a fan of Waltraub Meyer. Whether you buy it on DVD or whether you see it streamed on YouTube or any other video sharing site, I highly recommend this documentary. You won't be disappointed. Now, going into my thoughts about her as Santuzza. Now, it's no secret that she's been singing this role for several years. And now that she's nearing 60, she still gives such a magnificent performance as Santuzza. And such a heartfelt and very intelligent performance in this role that I absolutely praise her for, and I absolutely idolize her for. Heck, I consider her to be one of my role models. Now, sure, her voice doesn't really sound the same as it did like 20 years ago or 15 years ago. It still has that ringing quality. It still has that metallic and very sexy quality to her voice. However, there are times that her high notes are slightly pushed and they kind of lose their luster, especially that final high C. Now, it's okay, but it doesn't really sound that impactful like those of her yesteryears or even when she was in her prime. But still, she gives such a very intelligent portrayal of a jilted young woman. And sure, she's currently singing Valtraute from Goethe Demerung and Clitemnestra from Elektra. But still, hearing her as Santuzza was an absolute pleasure. She was able to get in the character very effectively. She was able to get into the character of such a jilted young woman who does want to be avenged but at the same time doesn't want anybody to lose their heads. So she was absolutely very masterful as Santuzza. And funny story, I actually saw Valtraub Meyer when I was walking to the Deutsche Oper Berlin. I gave her a little smile and she kind of gave a very, very small smile, even though she didn't really respond back. I'm sure that she was very busy and as much as I would have wanted her autograph that time, I know that she had a lot of like vocal exercises. Let's face it, she's a very professional singer and I know that she has to keep her voice in shape. And by golly, was her voice in shape this evening. Sure, it didn't really sound the same as, well, when she was in her prime, but still, it still had that sexy metallic quality that I love so much in a singer like Madame Meyer. And she also is very intelligent when it comes to the text. And she has very good diction, especially for someone who's not a native of Italy. And I guess that's what I really praise her for. She has such a solid voice very excellent diction, and she's a very intelligent performer. Sure, she may not sound like how she did in her prime, but that's all forgiven because she still did a fantastic job. A fantastic kudos to you, Madame Meyer. May you sing and sing forevermore, and may you continue to give us such wonderful, wonderful singing and masterful artistry. 
Her turidu for that evening was a young Russian tenor by the name of Maxim Aksenov. And my God, his voice was very reminiscent of that of Mario del Monaco, Franco Corelli, uh, Franco Bonisoli, Luciano Pavarotti, every Italian tenor of the past. It is such an Italian voice. Sure, just by listening to his diction, sure, he does have a hard time pronouncing each word correctly because, well, he's a Russian. But still, he sings with such passion and fire, and his high notes were explosive. They were the most explosive ones that I've ever heard live on stage. They were just ringing so powerful, so energetic, that I was basically on the edge of my seat. I was just glued, and my jaw pretty much dropped after hearing all of those high notes sung with such clarity and such frisson, so to say. He really is such a fantastic singer. Sure, his acting could have been a little bit better. Though, to be fair, he doesn't go over the top. But still, it's his singing that is the best asset of the evening. And I really hope to hear more of this fantastic singer in the near future. And his vi Vivo Il Vino Spumeggiante, beautifully sung. And especially with his final moments, I thought was just beautiful. And he was able to convey that roguish nature of Turidu that not a lot of people will even care for. But still, he does a fantastic job with Turidu in terms of voice and in terms of drama. I really hope to see more of him in, in the near future. I know for a fact that he's specialized in a lot of roles in the Italian and French repertoire, so I really hope to, to see more of him live on stage. The other feel for the e evening was Ivan Invarerdi, who is very well known throughout Italy for his dramatic baritone repertoire. And hearing him as Alfio, I definitely have to say, was fantastic. He had such a booming, virile, and very testosterone-laden voice that was so excited, exciting to listen to, especially in all the low notes. And his middle voice was just ringing with excitement. His stage presence was commanding and so badass that it was just probably one of the best interpretations of Alfio I've ever seen. And yeah, like I said, his voice was booming. It was powerful. It was rich, round, virile, very testosterone laden, and was so full of blood and guts. Now this is definitely an exciting singer that I really want to hear more of. He was definitely a very fantastic performer. The Lola was sung by Katarina Bradic, who I actually saw a few months ago as Amelia from Otello. Excuse me, Emilia from Otello. Here, I thought she had that sexy, velvety, Mezzo soprano voice that she was able to also use very well for such a small role like Emilia. Here, she still has that sexy, velvety, mezzo soprano voice that I just absolutely fall head over heels for. And her Lola was pretty kittenish. She was very sexy, very feisty, and she's absolutely fantastic in terms of voice. It was such a seductive sounding voice that I was absolutely mind blown. And then we have the Mama Lucia, who was sung by African-American contralto, Ronita Miller. Now I thought she was absolutely fantastic. She was totally on par with the other soloists, if not on their league. She has this rich, 
rich, round contralto voice, especially in the low notes, especially with her lines of Ayuta de la Voy, Santa Maria. Her Santa Maria was sung with absolute beauty and absolute um, gravity, so to say, that it was just a seductive timbre. And as I understand, she's also specialized in a lot of Wagner roles like Erda from The Ring and that of Mary from The Flying Dutchman. And I really hope to hear more of her because she is such a fantastic contralto. She definitely has such potential to sing like bigger, deeper contralto roles like Ulrika and Clytemnestra. I really hope to see more of her because she's absolutely an exciting performer. The chorus and orchestra did fantastically as well, along with Maestro Meister's conducting. They were all fantastic. So overall, in Cavalleria's case, there was a lot of masterful singing, masterful conducting, masterful singing from the choir and masterful playing from the orchestra and a pretty interesting production though it won't suit everybody and this was absolutely a fantastic production of Cabaleria that I saw all due to such top tier singing especially from Walter Meyer, Ronita Miller, Maxim Aksenov, Katarina Bradic and Ivan, Ivan Ingarardi. They were all fantastic. Well, tune in for the next review of Il Pagliacci, which will come out, well, a, a few moments from now, because this is basically a double bill review. So, see you later.